Greetings and salutations. I was just looking around, playing a little bit off camera. There's the item that we visited. And see this guy, that's a tar slime. So let's get rid of this guy first. Oh, tartar sauce. Okay, that's pretty funny. So they drop tar drops. And you can also get them by coming over here. Here's a tar pit that I found. And then right clicking it. Well, that's scary stuff. So in my inventory, you can see, oh God. If you get knocked into the tower, you die. Well, after a lot of struggling, I have no idea how I died. Which is, which sucks, but luckily, oh, oh sweet. So I'm glad I installed the uh, mini map mod for exactly reasons like this, because I am very bad with directions the reason for that whole ordeal because i wanted to show you guys this so you take the terra drops and the bio fossils well thanks not enough tar tar fossil okay so you put the tar drops in the ana oh ichthyosaurus dna nice so put the tar drops in the analyzer and you'll wait a bit Analyzing the tar has a chance to give you tar fossils and take those tar fossils and put them back in the analyzer and it is how you get Cenozoic DNA like this Gastronus. So I am going to keep trying because there's something that I really want. Well, apparently we got an achievement even though we've already done this. I got a lot of diamonds last night. And while I was mining, I was thinking, self, why are you doing this? You're being inefficient. I'm like, well, self, because I'm stupid. So we're going to change that and we're going to make something awesome. So first off, it's, it means destroying the tool station. Then when we come over here, then we take this tool station, plop it in there, three seared bricks, iron blocks, and we make ourselves a tool forge. Because this is the same capabilities as the tool station and then some. Oh yeah, added some more drains to make things go faster. Plop that down. And now you can see we added some extra stuff on here. And the thing I'm most interested in is the hammer. It can be used to break a lot of blocks at the same time. So to make a hammer, we need the tough tool rod, hammer head, and two large plates. We gotta make some casts for that. So over here at the casting ta stencil table, uh, so right here is a large plate pattern. Just get one. Uh, so since it's a pattern, you only need the one. We also need a tough tool rod. And the, the difference is uh, a normal tool rod costs one of whatever, whatever material you need, while a tough one needs three. So take that. And the last thing we need is the hammerhead. Now we're going to want to turn those stencils into casts. So just get the plate. And we're going to make it out of stone for now. Just get one. And then we're going to do the same thing with the tough tool rod. And then same thing with the hammerhead. There we go. There's the three pieces that we need. Next, we go on down to ca Casting Town. And I already put some molten aluminum brass in here. Take the part, slap it down, pour it on. Wait for it. And pop. There we go. We got the cast for that. Do it again. Pop. And do it again. I think I'm going to use up the rest of this uh, molten aluminum brass to make molds for everything real quick. And these are all the patterns that for everything that I need. And here's all the casts for everything. Except for the bowstring, the fletch pattern, and the arrow shaft. Because I don't think you want to put your arrow shafts or your bowstring inside a forge. I set up this little contraption. So what happens is, is you put stuff in one of the analyzers. Say... Do I not have anything right now? How about some relic scraps? Take the relic, relic scrap, slam it in the analyzer, and once it's done, instead of going into this inventory, it will go through the hopper into this chest. So I've just been just putting everything through here. We've got some Therizone source DNA and some raw chicken. Yummy. It's hammer making time. So, tool rod, fill that up. Now this is gonna be pretty expensive. So right now we have three blocks, six ingots worth of iron in here. So wait for it to cool and 
pick up the rod, pick that up. Now hammer time, slowly filling up. You can see it's slowly trickling down. I think we'll have enough for everything. I didn't do any math. And cool off. Come on, cool off. There we go, pick that up. And then plop down the, the uh, this dude. And we're going to have to make two of him. Wow, this is taking forever. And then we do it again. Now in the tool forge, hammer, blop, blop, put you there, and put you there. And we got ourselves an iron hammer. Oh, look at that. Now, I want to show you what this bad boy does. See the little uh, black bars on the uh, stone? It breaks nine at a time. This is awesome. Uh, this is going to make my life a lot easier. Oops, put a torch down. Hey, fossil. Don't mind if I do. Oh, yeah. Nine at a time. Tinker's Construct also add things that are called modifiers. Oh, here's a spoiler for something that we really want. However, we, what we want right now is a paleontologist. And by adding a biofossil or a tar fossil to our tool, it gives us an increased chance to find uh, biofossils. Because we really want more dinosaurs right now. So we come over here. Uh, we're just going to use our iron pick that I've been using. And we're going to plop in a biofossil. And it increases it to 2 out of 50. Okay, how high does this go? 10 out of 50? Wow, we can add a lot of levels to this. But I'm going to go down to those uh, fossils and we're going to see how many we can dig up. The moment of truth. Plant fossil. Bio fossil. Bio fossil. Bio fossil. Uh, this is really paying off. That was five bio fossils. Awesome. This thing is freaking awesome. That voice crack was well deserved. Like, look at this thing go. Oh man, but look at the durability go down. It's already almost broken. Yikes. Behold, an obsidian pickaxe used by placing obsidian inside this here furnace. Now I have four blocks left. Now the thing with this is, behold, stuff that normally isn't in the game. Cobalt. This cobalt, and let's see if I can find any in the next five seconds. This yellow stuff. Um, where is it? Ardite are two end game ores that we can use to make some really strong tools. So I'm going to use this handy dandy obsidian pickaxe to go mine up a bunch. I got a little overzealous. Oh goodness. Oh goodness. Well, I had to kind of slip into the nether fortress for a second because I died way down there. Yeah, 40 meter falls kind of do that to a person. So luckily, it looks like all of my stuff is still here. Fingers crossed. Dibba dibba dibba. Dancing pickaxe. Honey, have you seen where my shoes went? But luckily, it looks like nothing else was lost. However, we can use this time to gather up that stuff right there. Or let's get the ones over there that's not by the bubbling magma. It is called magma blocks. And they damage anything that step on them. And they look kind of cool. So maybe I can use them for a build or something. Okay, we get one nether fortress chest and no more. Flint and steel is too... Okay, yeah, that's worth it. I used used that cobalt to make a pickaxe head i used some copper to make a binding and some tar to you to make a uh, hilt and 578 durability mining speed of 12. it uh it's quite a bit better than all the other pickaxes i've made so far and i believe i will use this one to mine fossils i learned that the uh, um 
tool prefixes don't stack. So like how the rod, the head, and the binding are all magnetic, they don't stack. So uh, only the head will have the effect. So that's why we're using momentum to make it go faster, well-established to give us XP, and slimy to sometimes start spawn tar slimes so we can get more fossils. And look at that, 780 durability, while the old one is 204. A mining speed of double, so this will be nice. Um, this villager just gives us ancient glass, which is a very, very, very rare and finite material. Um, I just accidentally unleashed an oil flow. This is problematic. So to get what I want, I've been giving this archaeologist that only needs one pottery shard, a pottery shard for a bunch of emeralds, so then I can't do any more, more trades, so that I come back over here to this archaeologist that I found, or paleontologist that I found over by the tar pit over there, and because he has a tar fossil for only one emerald, and then since I do that, and then I come back over here, because that refreshes this guy's trade, and I'm just cycling that to get tar fossils, because there's a certain DNA that I want. Real quick, make another pickaxe, cobalt head, Ardite binding and believe it or not wooden tool rod so it has 1255 durability and this is going to be my um like fortune pick so i come back to the tool forge with some lapis this is tinker's construct stuff put the tool in there and then slam some like lapis in there and see it down here it says luck uh so 60 out of 60 put up it used up 60 lapis to give me luck one it used up a modifier and if I just keep putting lapis on it, see that number goes back up? Can I... So, basically we have luck one, which is basically the equivalent of fortune, meaning when we mine stuff, we get more drops. Oh my god, I've been at this for almost three hours now, and I finally got what I wanted. Look at all the stuff that I got. I finally got, ta-da, dodo DNA. You know what this means. DNA and goo go in. Now I'm going to build a coop, but I want some uh, dark oak for it. This dark oak forest, the, the, the desert temporal is right over there. Yeah, there's the archaeologist we went to. So we're just going to grab a couple of pieces of dark oak. Over there's the dark oak forest, and over here is some snowy mountains. So let's pick up some snow for the road, and I'm going to get some spruce as well. This is I'm going to try and make this look nice. I'm a very, very far away from home, but I found pumpkins. These will become useful in a minute. I do hereby decree this to be Dodo Hill. I'm going to build the uh, coop right... Voila! That took way longer than I was expecting. So, come on up here. Come on in. We got nice green carpet so they know they're uh, enslaved forever. Yes, enslaved forever. It's supposed to look like grass. And we're up high so they can dream about flying. Actually, I'm going to treat these dodos really good, kind of. Um, and then what happens is the, because the carpets are there because the whole floor is made out of hoppers. And those hoppers all lead into each other and they can come into this chest uh, so I can collect all the eggs. So now what we got to do is we've got to run over, grab our brand new cultivated dodo egg, the way of the dodo. We're bringing them back, baby. I really hope this doesn't screw anything up. Actually, I'm going to put it if I put it on top. Ta-da! Dodo! Oh, you are cute. Happy hung Can you eat out of the feeder? I have no idea. Uh I hope that works. If not, I'll have to just break this one block in the middle. But it's a baby Dodo. Um what is it? F1 Hi, pal. Oh, that is adorable. Hello. Dodos actually only went extinct a couple hundred years ago. And people are always like, oh yeah, dodos are so stupid. It's because the island that they were on, they had no natural predators. So when humans showed up, we brought stuff like cats. Cats. Oh man, look at this big tasty chicken. I'm going to eat it. And then the dodos are like, hey friend, what are you doing? Oh no, you're eating me. This whole project took all night and a couple other nights too, but those are days that I weren't. However, I think I'm going to have to end up calling it here for this episode. Thank you everybody so much for watching.
tomo- uh, next episode, I think we're going to build a rocket. We're going to get into the space bits. So I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.